Hi all, I'm Kristen Oropesa, Education Marketing and Community Coordinator here at Common Sense. We are back for another episode of helping educators get started with this brand new school year. Today I have Bianca De Jesus with us. She is our Senior Editor of EdTech Ratings. Good morning, Bianca. Hey Kristen, how are you? I'm good. I, I, are you excited about back to school? I am. I am. I don't have any kiddos to send back to school. So for me, it's just about creating content for some teachers. Awesome. And and we love all the content that we put out for teachers at this time and, and throughout the school year. Um, but, you know, Bianca, a lot of educators have been talking about AI and AI in education. And I think there are a lot of educators out there who are really excited about the potential um, AI might have in the classroom. And you've been uh, busy rating quite quite a few ed tech uh, products that utilize AI. Can you give me your top three tools that you're seeing that utilize AI and, and that educators or students might find helpful this school year? Yeah, for sure. So just so everybody knows, we have a list that we've created, which is uh, tools that use AI. So if you just look up Common Sense Education, you go to tools that use AI, um, you'll see a whole list. Right now we have about 13 tools, but we're building those out of a bunch of tools that you can experiment with this school year that might save you time. But I have three of them here today. So the first I'm going to pull up is Magic School AI. This is one that I, I've been recommending really to my family. Um, this is This is one of those tools. Um, I, I come from a family of educators. So my, my I was gonna say my teacher, my cousin uh, has used this in her classroom and has found it to be really useful. So um, Magic School AI, what does it do? So it has some really great AI templates that can help teachers create content for their classroom uh, and beyond. What's really cool about Magic School AI, uh, we have the review here, is that it has a bunch of mini tools within the tool. So, um, you know, if people ask, what does it do? It does a lot. You can create lesson plans. You can uh, generate student work feedback, uh, conceptual understanding generator. You can create IEPs, really any of the tasks that you do within a classroom, uh, Magic School AI can help with. It even creates jokes. Um, so there's some really fun things that you can do with it. Um, something that's really great about Magic School, you can input your grade level, the description of the assignment, and then the focus, or if you want to create a, a rubric that would help you grade whatever assignment you're creating, um, you can do that too. Um, and it also modifies the, the reading age uh, up or down. So if you want to you know, create an assignment for your students and maybe differentiate between students of different reading levels, you can do that here. As with any tool, you wanna check for bias and accuracy, especially with these AI tools, that's gonna be super important. Um, so while it does save time, you just wanna make sure that the things that you're inputting there, you don't immediately just give to your students. I know that most of you know that at this point, but I just feel compelled to say it. Um, and so another really great thing about Magic School AI, uh, we don't have a screenshot of it here actually, but there is an, uh, a chat bot that you can use that only responds to questions about teaching. So I think that's something that's really fun and um, informative and something that's unique to, to Magic School AI. Kristen, what do you, what do you think about this tool so far? I have to tell you, Bianca, like I work with um, new and I work with uh, pre-service, so like uh, teachers who are um, doing their student teaching. And one of the things that they they struggle with is like time management of being mm -hmm. a new teacher. Um, and I, I have to say, I've, I've been using uh, Magic School AI for a while. And it's something I recommend to my new teachers, um, just as because it, it it gives back some of that time that we spend in the classroom, right? Like I remember my first years of teaching, I was there till like seven o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and that is not sustainable, right? Um, but with these tools like Magic School AI, it it helps alleviate I think a lot of uh, a lot of that, you know time that we spend having to create and you know especially as a special ed teacher having to create like custom um assessments or custom lesson plan you know individualized lesson plans um and so i i think especially with all, their whole foray of of uh, you know tools that they have um and then some of their new integrations too. I don't know if you saw that they now have Adobe Express like oh, as nice. one of their tools, like an integration. It is so cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm I love it. <laughs> fan too, so yeah. Um, and another thing is, it can be hard to tell like what makes all these tools different. There's so many of them, uh, and that's one of the things that we try to do here at Common Sense is make sure those distinctions are clear so that you can know what you're going into. So diff it. I would say the strongest differ. Well. No, no pun intended, but the strongest differentiator here is that uh, Diffit allows you to create a lot of different formats of classroom material. So while uh, Magic School AI has a lot of different tools that you could use within it. Diffit will be like, okay, what do you want? Do you want, you know, uh, multiple choice questions? Do you want an idea map? And it gives you the content that you're going to be handing to students in as many different formats as you want and whatever grade levels you want them to be at. Um, so I think that's what's really cool about diff it. Just one small thing to note here, for a lot of the younger grades, it doesn't differentiate as well. So anything from like fifth grade or below, you might get similar responses. Um, at least that's what happened the last time that we checked this tool, that, that we um, reviewed it. So there's some more development to be had there. Um, but aside from that, I think it's just a really great way to manipulate your content into different modes and maybe just even play around with what you want to see. Maybe you don't even know what you're looking for and just want to see like, okay, I want to teach this content, but what format do I want it to be in? I think this is a really good tool to explore that. And I tell this all the time to teachers who are starting with AI, like it's a starting point, right? It's a, it's a, a thought partner and it'll help you get like all your brainstorming and stuff out. And it's up to you to kind of customize as you see fit to the, to your, to your needs of the classroom. Right. Right. So this is, it's great. And, and I love that they can, uh, teachers can export these resources you mentioned it can be a printable so it's pdf but it also can be um dropped into if they're a google classroom they can they can drop it directly into google classroom so kids can get working on it you know right away so yeah cool. so it's pretty awesome i would say the, the another um downside here though is that there's no uh student tracking or like central dashboard but honestly we've seen that a lot across different ai tools that you know they create a lot of content but there's no way to actually submit answers through the tool or for teachers to be able to grade things through it sometimes. Um, so that that's the case here, that there's no central dashboard yet, at least as, at the time that we had looked at this tool. Another one that we have here, excited to talk about Brisk. Um, Brisk does some similar things to Magic School AI, except the difference here is that it's a plugin. So you're gonna download it to your Chrome browser um, and then it turns into a little button with the letter B on it. Um, and then you can click it and then you get a lot of uh, similar things that you might see in Magic School AI or Diffit, but it's kind of already integrated into something you're already doing. So for example, if you're working in a Google Doc and you have um, multiple choice questions, you can highlight everything and then put it into another format if you'd like, just literally with the click of a button. This is what it would look like if you have it inside of a, a Google Doc where you have everything that you have written in, on one side. And then once you click the little B, it'll expand into these options um, where, you know, you can tra uh, transform it into a rubric or a resource or a lesson plan um, or even can automate some administrative tasks. And of course, like I said before, you wanna be cautious about this and don't want to use it to automate everything that you're doing. Um, it isn't always gonna be accurate, but you know, you can, you can uh, uh, kind of automate some of the more repetitious parts of, of uh, grading or other things that um, take you time. I, I love all the tools it has. I remember as a teacher, I I used to really uh, dislike making rubrics. They were so challenging and time consuming. And to be able to have a tool now that, you know, you can put in the information that you're looking to assess and it can help you create one in literally like minutes. It's it's such a time saver. I think educators really appreciate that nowadays when there's so much stuff already on their plate, right? No, for <laughs> sure, for sure. And especially like going into the school year, these are three things that I recommend. But at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that you're using them cautiously. Um, you're not inputting uh, student data or anything private. Um, and then, yeah, just, you know, uh, making sure that your, your privacy um, is being protected as you want it to be. A lot of these tools don't have privacy built into it. You can check out our privacy reviews separately of these tools um, if you have any concerns there. But overall, I think there's some really great ways to save teachers time. Um, and then what we hope to do is then branch into uh, tools that students can use in the classroom too that do incorporate AI. We have some of them, there's more every day, um, but hopefully we'll be building out a separate list for students uh, 
to be using AI as well in the classroom, um, depending on what your student, what your um, uh, school district allows. Well, Bianca, thank you so much for taking the time and, and sharing these tools. Um, as always, I, I always get it, I, you know, I'm removed from the classroom at this point, but, you know, so excited to <laughs> have educators try these tools and, and just, again, make their, make their school year a little bit more easier with common sense, right? <laughs> for sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you.